Welcome back students to another class of Basics of Mechanical Engineering. We'll be continuing our journey into the world of thermodynamics. In today's class, we'll be studying the, the concepts of heat transfer in different processes. We, what we'll require is our knowledge of different processes, namely adiabatic, isothermal, isobaric, isochoric, and polytropic processes as well as the concepts that we've learned that is uh, the first law of thermodynamics and those concepts of regarding specific heats i hope that you have gone through the previous lectures because those uh, those concepts will be absolutely important so let us look at individual processes one by one and figure out what the heat transfer in each of these processes will be first we'll be looking at the constant pressure process as we know the constant pressure process the setup will be looking something like this what we have is that we have a friction a frictionless piston cylinder mechanism with a constant weight on it all right so there's a constant force that's acting on it because there's a constant weight on it and it acts a constant pressure regardless of the position on, of the piston what we do is that we alter the thermal content or the the, the net internal energy in the system by heating or cooling it. As we alter the heat content of the system, what happens is that uh, its various parameters change. Its pressure, as, as we know, will remain constant. However, the volume and temperature changes. All right. And let's just assume that this is going to be a heating process. So you have added heat into the system and the net of the, uh, the, that results in the, uh, the system expanding and it expands by an amount of delta V. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to compute the, the amount of heat that we have had to add into the system. To figure that out, what we are going to do is we are going to analyze the system from a first law perspective. Let's write down the first law equation where we have got the total heat transfer minus the total work transfer is equal to the change in, in uh, internal energy of the system. Now, from what we understand, this work is PDV work. So PDV work for isobaric process can be given as pressure into final volume minus initial volume. So that's what we are going to substitute here. So we have got heat transfer minus PDV work is equal to change in internal energy. Let's rearrange this entire equation and we have got DQ is equal to PV2 minus V1 plus U2 minus U1. Let us club all the, uh, the terms which contain the uh, condition for the initial terms and result of the final terms together. So I'll just rearrange all of this and I'll have U2 plus PV2 minus in the bracket U1 plus PV1. And this is nothing but the formula for final enthalpy and initial enthalpy. And this can be written as H2 minus H1. So DQ is equal to H2 minus H1. And we know that the change in enthalpy from uh, for any process from the previous classes is equal to DQ is equal to MCP DT. And in this case, DT is nothing but MCP final temperature minus initial temperature. So we have got heat transfer during the process 1 to 2 is equal to M Cp T2 minus T1. So this is the equation for heat transferred during a isobaric or a constant pressure process. Next what we're going to do is we are going to explore the heat transfer in a constant volume process okay from before 
let's consider this known setup where we have got an enclosed volume of gas which is being let's say heated up what we do is that since it's heated up we use q underscore v amount of heat and we change its in uh, the energy content of the system specifically thermal energy content what happens is the parameters change from state 1 to state 2 and the parameters of pressure change from p1 to p2 volume as usual remains constant in this constant volume or isochoric process temperature again changes from p1 to t2 again what we are going to do is we are going to analyze this from a first law perspective dq net heat transfer minus net work transfer or the total work transfer is equal to change in internal energy this is the first law equation what we are going to do is again this is nothing but the pdv or displacement work the pdv or displacement work in this case as we all know uh, that is the work done in any iso coric process the displacement work is always going to be zero so we just insert the value of uh, the work done dq minus zero is equal to u2 minus u1 so we have the total heat transfer is equal to the change in internal energy and as we know the change in internal energy can be given as dq is equal to m cv dt or if you write it in terms of the final uh, the initial and final conditions heat transfer from 1 to 2 is nothing but m cv t2 minus t1 so this is the equation for heat transfer done in a constant volume process next we'll be exploring heat transfer done in a constant temperature process in a constant temperature process we look at this particular setup where we have a fixed volume of gas which is undergoing a process let's just say the piston is moving inwards now as the piston moves inwards really really slowly these wall uh, the contents the gas cont uh, the gas enclosed within the piston starts warming up as it's getting compressed now as it starts getting compressed it starts warming up and uh, since the walls of this uh, the uh, the piston are perfectly uh, conducting they are considered as diathermal walls the heat escapes to the surrounding so what happens is that regardless of the uh, you know amount of compression that takes place the temperature always remains constant okay so this is the setup that we have we have looked at the setup earlier okay so let's assume that this process is undergoing a isothermal or constant temperature process so again we are going to analyze this from a first law perspective dq that is a total heat transfer minus the total work done is equal to u2 minus u1 now what we are going to do is that here we are going to be plugging in the known formula for change in internal energy so change in internal energy we know that u2 minus u1 is nothing but m cv t2 minus t1 in this case t1 is equal to t2 so u2 minus u1 is equal to 0 or u2 is equal to u1 the initial and final states of internal energy are the same for this process so we are left with dq minus dw is equal to 0 or dq is equal to dw that is the heat transfer the value of heat transfer is the same as the value of work done in the or by the system during the isothermal process that implies q1 to 2 is equal to w1 to 2 and we know the uh, the value or the formula for w1 to 2 as p1 v1 natural log of v2 upon v1 where 
P1V1 is equal to P2V2. Okay. And we can also rewrite this as P1V1 natural log of P1 by P2. So this is the formula or these are the possible formulae for heat transfer during a isothermal or a constant temperature process. Next we look at heat transfer in a polytropic process. A polytropic process is a process which undergoes a, a change which takes the form of PV powered N is equal to constant. Now, in this case, again, we have a piston cylinder mechanism. It's moving from state, uh, uh, state 1 to state 2. Values of pressure change from P1 to P2. Values of volume change from V1 to V2. Values of temperature change from P1 to P2. However, they all take the form of PV powered N is equal to constant. So again, what we're going to do, we are going to analyze this system from a first law perspective. Total heat transfer minus net work done is equal to change in internal energy. Here what we do is what we, uh, we just rearrange this equation. DQ is equal to U2 minus U1 plus DW. Now, the, the work done in the process, what we're going to do, we're going to just plug in the value or plug in the formula uh, that we have explored earlier, U2 minus U1 plus M R T1 minus T2 upon N minus 1. Now, this equation comes from the form uh, work done from the uh, in a polytropic process is p1 v1 minus p2 v2 upon n minus 1 what we can do is that we know that pv is equal to nrt thus p1 v1 is equal to nrt1 am i right or uh, if you're writing in terms of mass this is going to be mass into number of moles uh, sorry mass into uh, gas constant into temperature and this for the final condition p2 v2 is equal to m r t2 and once you substitute that here we get the form of the equation as m r taken as constant t1 minus t2 divided by n minus 1 we also substitute the value for a uh, change in internal energy as m c v t2 minus t1 plus m r t1 minus t2 the whole divided by n minus 1 now what we're going to do is we're going to try to simplify this equation i just cleared the board a bit just a second You have got Q 1 to 2, 1 to 2, all right, I'll rewrite, uh, now simplifying this, what you're going to have is Q 1 to 2 is equal to M R T 1 minus T 2 into gamma minus N divided by N minus 1 into gamma minus 1. Now what we can do is that we can pull the n minus 1 out here. So you have got q 1 to 2 is equal to m r t 1 minus t 2 divided by n minus 1. Okay and what we are left with is in the bracket gamma minus n upon gamma minus 1. And if you recall, this is nothing but the work done in the process. So Q1 to 2 is nothing but work from 1 to 2 into gamma minus n divided by gamma minus 1. So this is the equation for heat transfer done from 
uh, in a polytropic process all right next we'll be exploring an adiabatic process a heat transfer done in an adiabatic process we know he uh, an adiabatic process is a process in which heat transfer is zero so heat transfer in an adiabatic process uh, if you analyze it from a first law perspective you've got sorry q1 to 2 is equal to 0 all right so today what we have done is we have examined the various heat transfer processes uh, or heat transfer in different processes with that uh, we have explored the heat transfer the work done and the characteristic equation in different processes with this what you will be able to do is to tabulate uh, a detailed understanding of these individual processes kindly do that so you have got isobaric isochoric isothermal adiabatic and polytropic processes you can have the characteristic equation you can have the work done in each of these processes as well as the heat transfer in each of the process all along with the definitions all right so kindly do that in the next class what we'll be doing is that we'll be exploring the limitations of the first law of thermodynamics and followed by the second law of thermodynamics